This is our plyometric and speed workout two. Now again, just like we did with our plyometric and speed workout one, we wanna make sure that this is set in the correct order of our training. This should be before our lifting. If it is done afterwards, it cannot be done after a lower body exercise or a lower body training day. So now with this, we're gonna do our full dynamic warm up prior to the start of this. And we're gonna have creativity just like everything else to find a way to get it done. Surface is very important when we're talking about plyometrics. Now we're gonna be doing some, some jumps that are gonna have some different force lines. So we wanna make sure that when we do this, we're on a surface that we're not gonna slip. Wet grass is not going to be ideal. So I'm gonna do my first movement broad jumps actually on the macadam here. Even though I don't like the hard contacts, this is gonna be a lot safer for me. So the first thing are gonna be my broad jumps. I wanna make sure when I do these, it's one rep at a time, focusing on two things. We're gonna focus on hips coming through and explosion coming out. Maybe more importantly though, my landing, and you're gonna see that come into the picture later, my landing, and my butt going back, my knees staying out, and getting into that good low athletic position. Big breath, arms up, make sure my eyes are set forward. My body goes where my eyes go, so if I'm looking down, I'm gonna go down. Big breath here, and absorb down. My butt is behind me, I'm in a good athletic position to be able to cut, move in any, any angle. We're also going to do these repeat. I'll just do two in a row on this just to give you an understanding. But what you need to understand is that your first jump cannot be at 100%. You wanna make sure you land with control. So I'm gonna go 90% on my first, 100 with my second, and then use that momentum to go about 110% or 101% on my third with all that momentum going through, but always under control. So I'll just do two here. Your ground time is gonna be a little bit less. Big breath, explode out, small jump, explode out, big jump. Landing is key on all of these jumping exercises. We wanna really groove that in. Now we're gonna work some lateral explosion. We're gonna to go to some side jumps. Very similar to how we're gonna set these up compared to the, uh, the uh, last few plyometric drills. So we're gonna do some single jumps. We're gonna do some repeat jumps with our side jumps. Always having base, very important. Making sure our knees come up. Our base stays the same and then land in the same position we took off from to the right or to the left. Big breath, sink down with my butt going back. My arms are gonna cross my body slightly on this to give me momentum and where I need to go. I stay up so my chest stays up. I'm here, explode and absorb. So I'm gonna go on both sides with that. I'm also going to do some repeat jumps. Biggest thing that's gonna happen on these, you're gonna see yourself land and those knees are gonna buckle in as you continue through those jumps. We need to make sure when we do these, those knees are always staying out. The butt is the major mover on this. So now with this, we're gonna go explode up, absorb, explode up, absorb. Always in a good position to be able to transition 360 degrees. Now we're gonna go with some single leg lateral explosion. We're gonna do speed skates, but first we're gonna do them slow. We wanna understand technique. Use the icky shuffle when you're going through this. So my first thing is just going to be a slow speed skate, learning how to absorb down in my hip and my foot staying underneath my body. So I'm gonna explode up and absorb, explode up and absorb. Going back through with no knee rotating in, foot always underneath my hip. Once I establish good technique with that, then I can move to the speed part of the speed skate. Trajectory is important. It's gotta be a rainbow. Don't just shear side to side. So I'm gonna explode up, I'm gonna hit, explode back. Don't go too fast to the point where you're reckless and out of control. You should always have that foot hitting in the spot that you want it to hit in. From there, we're gonna to go to a claw drill. Establish that good running form. Worked on this in the last one. Against the wall is gonna be ideal. Knee is up, toe is up. Landmark is the laces of my opposite shoe. Foot hits the ground. Claws for about three inches. Comes back up to my butt violently. Wheels back around to the start position. Use your breath to pulse the ground. Engage those lungs as you hit. So I'm here. A lot of people have trouble breathing or they're just embarrassed to breathe. When you're on these home workouts, it's ideal for you guys to ingrain that understanding of how important breath is. So we're gonna go through the reps and set on both legs of that claw drill and then use it in drills to follow. You're gonna use it on the next one, that stop drill. You're also gonna use that broad jump. Make sure you have a start line and you have a finish line. I got chalk, but I also have shoes out there. I got a bike helmet as my start point. I'm gonna be nice and low, just like I would be with the start of a jump. I'm gonna explode out, violently accelerate all the way to that line. Don't start to prepare as you get to it. Explode out and then drop your hips behind you, feet underneath. So now I'm using my landing on all of my jumping drills. And I'm also using that in and out out technique with it. 
Eyes are gonna be important. If your eyes look down at that line, you're gonna tumble over, you're not gonna have balance. You wanna make sure that you're out and then drop and sit behind you with as few pitter-patter steps as possible. Now, don't overreach and try and break on one foot. You wanna make sure that you control your deceleration. From there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some hill sprints or bounding, whatever you have access to. I get a hill behind me, so I'm gonna rotate back and forth. You're gonna need some variety with this. The great thing about hill sprints, it slows you down so you can think about technique. So when I'm sprinting up that hill, and again, depending upon the grade, as it says in the sheet, it's gonna determine your distance. If I get a grade that's straight up, I'm not gonna go 40 yards up that hill. I wanna make sure that it's relative to the height or to the angle on that. So with this hill and the grade of this, I'm probably gonna go about 15 yards or so, making sure that I'm thinking about technique, not just getting to the top. So the slow motion is going to allow me to think about knee drive, hip thrust, foot planting underneath my body, and great arm actions. Make sure each rep you break down one of those points and then ingrain it in. If I don't have access to a hill, I can do bounding. Now I prefer for bounding to be done on the grass. If you have to do it on macadam, that's fine. With this, we want to understand pushing through my rear hip, driving through my front knee. These shouldn't be done fast. They should be done explosive. They should be done controlled. They should be done with an understanding here. So when I go through, I'm stepping from right foot to left foot to right foot to left foot. Sounds like a corny example, but imagine this is a lake and there's rocks going across and you're gonna jump from rock to rock to get to the other side. A lot of people are gonna end up doing power skips. That's not what we want. We want right foot to left foot to right foot to left foot. So I'm here, I explode and hold, explode and hold, explode and hold. Making sure my trajectory, I'm greedy. I want vertical and horizontal. It's about 45 degrees. Your breathing is very essential to this. As you hit the ground, if you don't have the proper, enga proper engagement of your breath, you're gonna crumble, you're not gonna be able to get back up. So learn how to breathe when you're doing these exercises. That's going to conclude our plyometric and speed workout number two.